let's, I guess I'll convene the meeting and um, call for the approval of the minutes of the meeting of December 20th. I move to, to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, the historical commission budget request, this will not take long, but I thought it was worth at least a conversation. We were asked as all the other committees and commissions for our annual budget request. And um, I went back as far as I had town reports under our roof, which is to 2009 and discovered that our budget was $200 in 2009 and it has stayed at $200. <laughs> I have no particular reason to think we need more than $200. Sometimes we spend that and sometimes we don't. Um, but I thought I would open it up for conversation at least. <laughs> what could we use it for? Well, I mean, does anyone does anyone think there is a reason to request uh, more than two hundred dollars next year? If is there any sponsor, reason? Go ahead, Judy. Well, I was going to ask if there's any reason we'd have to do any legal advertising for a hearing or anything because those get expensive. But I think they're picking those up in the. I think we never Found, have. Town accounts anyway, so. I, well, I mean, our, what if we have to maintain the hidden history site? Well, the town website guy has said that he we we can maintain it on the town website. I mean, I mean, get, you know, uh, Juliet to help us with some aspect of it. That would probably, you know, anything we do, if we ask for $50, it's going to be what if, 20% increase in the book. I, I mean, I, exactly, no, exactly. Yeah. Part of my head, my head, my head is hurting at how much time we would have to spend talking about the argument to have 250 or 300. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, we'll, ha we'll ask for 200 again, Allison. We ask okay. for 300. If we don't spend it, we don't spend it. We mostly don't, so. And, and simply note that it has not been increased for X number of years? For known history. <laughs> for known history, for known history. Um, this has gotten now complicated because I'm now on the town's finance committee, so I will have to recuse myself from the discussion oh. of this weighty well, expense. Leave, leave it then. Sorry. Yeah, I, I actually, I would rather not bring it up yeah, you know, at the first meeting, therefore cementing my image as a big spender. <laughs> <laughs> if we haven't been spending it, so be it. And if we have a special expense, if we needed to at that point, there's usually a special There's usually counsel. another source. There's another source. Mm -hmm. um, so our next weighty discussion is about our annual report, which Judy has already improved. Thank you very much. Did, and Susan wrote, did, Alan, Allison, is there anything <laughs> anything no, else you wish? Okay. I didn't see anything. Okay. Um, I am um, great. Then I will send that to Amy as complete. Um, I sent our link to the UMass undergraduate Zachary Fauser and suggested that he call in at 510. Um, I didn't hear back from him but I had heard back from him several previous times. So I'm assuming that he will call in, but I would suggest that we move forward to uh, the historic Waitley text on the town website, which is yours, Allison. Um, I, I had offered, can you hear me okay? Okay. Uh, I had offered to, to uh, visit the first paragraph of that text to try to improve its presentation of the first 10,000 years of human activity in this town. And uh, um, I, I started to do that and, and that in itself wasn't terribly difficult, except as I tried to mesh my thinking about the beginning of it with the following paragraphs, I started finding more and more 
issues that seemed like problems and questions and um so i kind of and then then i lost the use of my computer so there was that but uh i came to a place go ahead what well i came to a place where i started to ask myself and ask you know the, the, the just into the the cosmos what is the point of this statement uh donna suggests that the website uh, software or uh, you know structure comes with a blank square that says put your town history here and so I think that, that's uh, it I think that's someone it. Threw something in there <laughs> just to satisfy the template um but what I is they took it from one of the um heritage landscape surveys verbatim but well, it, well it's, it's Allison and I, Allison and I then looked at the current one to the about Waitley, and that is la laced with errors of fact, not a, I mean, actual fact. Zachary has entered. So Allison, do you mind? Well, no, no, no. We'll pick this okay. up again. Okay. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Zachary, I'm I I'm Donna Wiley speaking, appearing to you as Brian Domina, who is our town administrator, because we're using the town <laughs> <laughs> account. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, do you um, do you want to introduce yourselves, the rest of you? Susan, why don't you start and call on somebody else? Okay, I'm Susan Barron. Judy, I'm Judy Markland. Ellen, I'm Ellen Markland Bell. Ellen McCardle, yeah. <laughs> well, nice to meet you all. I'm Zachary Fowser. I'm a student over at UMass Amherst, um, and I'm a senior over there in the environmental conservation major. Nice. Oh, so you're hanging out with Scott Jackson? A little bit, yeah. I've heard the yeah. name, but I haven't met him yet. <laughs> He's a Waitley person. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, uh, Zachary, I believe that I have um, set this up so that you should be able to screen share. Do you want to throw up your map to begin with? Do you want to talk to us for a while first about what you did and why you did it? This is yeah. um, sure. I can, this, I can... is, this will not be graded. So just <laughs> do what makes sense to you. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> it might be applause, though, you know. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds there, good. I'd, I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to share my screen with you. I have my whole poster. Oh, it says the host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay. Uh, I, oh, wait. I, I think I just fixed it. Try oh, again. Okay. 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 Can you all see the, the good screen? Yes. Green. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So I was a part of a a class last semester called Intro to GIS. And for our final project, we were given a list or anything that we wanted to share about on a final project presentation that we all got together and presented to all of the students, including staff that would come in and, and see everybody's PowerPoint and project presentations. And I decided to do mine on some stone walls in the area. And I was interested in Waitley mainly because I liked uh, the area, the valley, um, where a lot of agricultural um, uh, advancements happened. And um, I liked Waitley because it was um, not as heavily urbanized and um, built up upon. And um, after all of the forest was cleared through agricultural means, um, other urban planning developments didn't um, inhibit the the forest um, growing back. Um, luckily, some of our forest in Waitley and some of old growth are still occurring in the town, which is great. Um, and it, so it brought a lot of hope for finding stone walls in the area. And I don't know if any of you are on, understand like the power the past um, reasons why we have walls in the area but it was mainly because of farmers coming in and they would find good plots of land that had good slope and good um, crop and good soil um, or the best soil that they could find and um, they would clear cut um, all of the trees to build their house and they needed um, to get good 
quality soil so they could build crops and sell them to the local farm or to feed themselves. Um, so they needed to get all of the rocks out of the, the ground from the last glacial movement. And in order to do this, they had to either do it with their family or on bigger farms, they had to either hire people to help them move all of these rocks or they would purchase enslaved people um, to help them do the work for them. Uh, and um, so a lot of these areas that I found um, or were looking for had to be in these exact um, of, of um, slope and, and um, forest quality. Um, so first what I did um, with the town of Waitley was I downloaded some LIDAR data, which was just basically some elevation um, data of the area. And um, then I turned it into a hill shade function and shaded relief, which just basically took uh, a light source from a specific point and cast it all over the land to see some shadows of hills or some rocks. Um, um, and what you could see, um, if you looked in the middle right, the figure one, um, that is the hillshade. What you got was just basically a whole layer of just gray. And there were some of these lines that would be very straight um, and would make 90 degree angles, um, which doesn't naturally occur in nature, which um, got me intrigued. Um, and once I found these straight lines, all of this, all of this map of West Waitley, I had to figure out whether they were stone walls or what, uh, what could they be. Um, and I had to basically turn on and off that layer from satellite imagery to the gray, the grayscale hillshade, um, and see if it was um, current agricultural farms or baseball fields or current property lines. Um, and once I fat figured out that some areas were just over forested land and it wasn't anything else that I could go forward with uh, the next step to my process, which was um, downloading using the elevation data and making slope form of that whole area. And so if you look at the, the bottom screen with like the bunch of pink and gray and yellow, um, what the pink represents is slope that is shallow. So around zero to around 15 degrees of slope. And then all of this gray area and white that's um, mixed in with it is just um, two steep areas, um, more than 15 degrees, which I guessed was areas that farmers would not want to grow crops. Um, and once I found these areas, I looked back at all of my my rock walls and um, saw that in most of the areas um, where rock, my rock walls were, were in shallow areas. Um, I'm not sure if I can get a pointer on this, so I'll do my best just um, verbally talking, but mainly in the middle left, um, there's a bunch of areas where it's all shallow um, and less steep places for rock walls. And even if you got rid of these, these yellow, lines that I put there myself, you'd see a little sliver of the absence of pink showing that there is an increase of slope that's dramatic. Um, so it made me realize that um, where I was going was was on the right direction. Um, and um, Zachary, do you, do you know what you're, sh where, where in Waitley this is, what you're showing yeah. us? So this is Chestnut Plain Road there on the right hand side, the diagonal going north and south. Mm -hmm. And you can see the Swamp Road in the upper right hand corner is Swamp oh, Road yes. and Christian Lane zooming off. You see that? Yeah. Um, I sh yeah, I should get like a little, um, I think mostly of where the walls were. There's not a clear name of the road on the left side where all of the major um, rock walls were. There it's intersecting below and above of um, Williamsburg Road. Um, but there isn't, I couldn't find a name of that road on Google Maps or Apple Maps. It looked a little- Well, the, 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 the blue thing is the reservoir. Right. And that's Westbrook that's running in a diagonal across the square. Okay. Right. Yep. So that should help orient. So that's Nash Hill Road that's going off to the Southwest there. Okay. Um, yeah, um, and then on the middle part, um, middle section on the bottom, 
um, where all of these um, straight parallel yellow lines are, that's uh, roughly near Mountain uh, Dry, oh no, Mountain Street. Um, once again, the road right near there is, is was not named, um, but it's it's interesting. Like the one, some of these were the additions of current farms. The the rock wall that I saw on the very bottom right hand corner, um, that the, the right half that's in the pink is already a farm that's existing. And then to the left of that was an addition of farm. And it seemed that the farm kind of took or gotten smaller in, in size since whenever it was made in the 1800s. So the mountain street you just mentioned is Chestnut Mountain Street in Hatfield that goes up the hill to oh. the... To the yeah, the Whitley uh, part was discontinued, I think, a long time ago. Right, right. The road, the road you couldn't find is no longer functioning as a road. Oh, it was, okay. it was uh, abandoned by the town. <laughs> <laughs> but there are house foundations up there, probably stone walls too. So it's <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I'd love to go around more of this area and see if if what I found through GIS is actually um, occurring in real life. <laughs> So did you spend much time on the ground then, or is this just an exercise in um, doing it virtually with? This was a big um, project that was circulating and, and a lot of heavy GIS work. Um, yeah. okay. I tried going out to find some of these, but I, I'm not from Waitley myself, and I did my best trying to yeah. find um, properties that I could get into. Sometimes yeah. they were on no property zones, or I just wasn't able to find them through lack of service. But um, if I were to do it again, I could find G GPS locations and um, have a better chance at finding them. <laughs> um, and how did you um, how did you know whether the straight lines you were seeing were remnants of stone walls or remnants of found of of former structures of foundations yeah um, is, it a, is it i mean maybe it's a scale issue <laughs> yeah no i i understand that that's an interesting thing to um, uh, um, some differences with foundations there i th that was one of the things that i am just in understanding where i could have gone wrong or would have been mistaken about some of these could be um foundations um whether some clarifications on whether they were rock walls is less 90 degree angles, um, more straight lines. Um, some of these areas don't have more squares, but just straight lines. And some of these areas back then were either for property sizes or um, they would find the closest that they could bring those rock wall rocks and then just build a line from there. Um, so some of these areas are bigger, making me think that it is just properties, um, and some are just straight lines, making me think that they're just putting these rocks in places. Mm -hmm. A lot of it does mark field boundaries and things like that. That ground truth is a is an important part of this this object. I mean, I used to work for a guy who was um, the historic preservation officer in Rhode Island, and one of his goals was to map all the stone walls in the state. And that was part of our survey approach, but it was long before GPS and all we had were compasses and, uh, and the like to, and topographic maps to try and figure out what was what. Yeah, it was a challenge. Yeah, <laughs> I remember learning in the class, they were talking about the history of GIS and just me going on a computer, learning it that way. It was interesting to see it, how people in the, back when it was created and more discovered and um, back in the 50s and 60s, how they did it. So did we, have we um, hijacked your presentation? I think you got halfway through your methodology and we started Someone's asking questions. <laughs> so. oh, no, you're good. I, I, that was pretty much the, the whole discussion on my part. Um, I had a little discussion at the end of why, why these were important to our history, but Nothing more on my methodology, which is good. Can you um, can you expand Figure One or or not? I can try zooming in. Is this working? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. 
Yeah, so yes. you can see some of the, the strings. Oh yeah, that helps a lot. That helps a lot, thank you. Yeah, with grayscale, it can be difficult. Um, yeah, so you can see like the straight line on the top and then it makes a right angle down. So the, the, I'm understanding the foundation, it, this could be a foundation. It seems a little big for um, a house of this size in this area to be um, this, but it could be a foundational house. Um, but these are the types of grayscale, yeah. But that actually hits on one of my questions, which is a matter of scale. That you know, can it, we can we guess whether it's a foundation or a wall based on how large the area is? Do yeah. you have a way of doing that? I have a little scale down here, um, one kilometer wide. If I just do this really quick, it looks about that area that I just showed from. You know, mm -hmm. slightly move over um, from the top left to the top right corner. It looks about half of a mile long, maybe a little okay. bit less. Um, okay, so it's not a house, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, unless it's Versailles. <laughs> no. Yeah, a portion of it could be a house um, or a foundation, but yeah, right. yeah. Interesting. A lot of foundations would be indentations too, rather than. Right. Right. Okay. Um, I'm very curious about looking at lidar images of Waitley and neighboring areas. Is that something that is publicly accessible? It is. Um, I believe. I'm trying to think if you don't have the GIS um, app, I believe you can still access it. Um, if you go to, I can put the link in the chat actually. Um, let me try to find okay. out to do that real quick. Um, if you go to uh, massgis.com, I believe, um, then you can find the the lidar data. And at the end of this presentation, I can find specific um, um, link to it and and email Donna about it. Yeah, I think yes, I have thanks. all that data, but it's. It's not easy to use directly without a GIS application. Yeah, um, and GIS can be a big um, slows me down considerably. So yeah, <laughs> um, it can be a large file too, so it can be can be time consuming. Um, so, is the the map with the pink and the gray? Mm -hmm. uh, is does that uh, hold all the rock wall? suspects that you discovered it holds all of the ones that i have confidence in or the highest confidence that i have in um i can definitely do more advancement with this and go out into the field more um, and see if any of the ones that i have on this map are actually foundations or not rock walls um, and i can also do some more work in finding more um, rock walls or um, some more um, I, I was driving around the other day and I noticed some rock walls on some steep paths. Um, so I might do some more detail with slope and see if an increase in slope um, could find more rock walls. Mm -hmm. So Zachary, you... sheep, sheep farming was a big deal here in the early 19th century. And I know that they were grazing, grazing sheep three quarters of the way up Mount Monadnock in New Hampshire. So. Wow. Um, I think that sheep wouldn't necessarily mind steep slopes and yeah, they would need, would need some fences for bounding. Well, I, I can tell you that Mount Esther is crisscrossed with a whole grid of, of well-preserved stone walls that were built for livestock, not, not for stone removal, from, not for soil improvement, not for agricultural crops, but right. for livestock right. containment. It's a different kind of wall, and and you can tell from looking what it was made for. That's interesting. That's a good take. Yeah, when I was doing this project, I was mainly doing on agricultural and um, tilling yeah. soil, so I didn't really think too, too much about agriculture. That's a good... Well, Mount Esther, which is in the center of your, your map there, is is got a, a, a whole, you know, grid of stone walls, and so does our property, which is on there, and it's within your purple... Um, flat coloration too and okay there there should be walls that show up there awesome 
So are you are you continuing this project? Is, is that what I just heard? Well, I'm not continuing with the class, but I'd, I'd love to continue it um, if, if there's a need for it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you also, when we, we talked, Zach, you said, I can show the project with my poster, which is obviously a poster, <laughs> but that you might, when school is um, open again, you might be able to show us more of your methodology from the source from the GIS program? Yeah. Um, is that something people would like to have Zachary, if, if we can keep <laughs> using up Zachary's time? It sounds like, um, sounds like Allison, you would like to see more of the- um, yeah. I'm, to I'm very interested in, I'm very interested in, in trying to map and see these things. Yeah. yeah it if would be I, interesting. Uh, if I were to show you um, GIS, the, the app, I could um, transfer different layers and remove um, different kinds of um, um, aspects to the map to have a better understanding of, of what exactly you're looking at. Because right, right now, it, it can be a little daunting at first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, th there was a project, I'm not sure you're familiar with it, uh, that was run by the state of New Hampshire, which used LIDAR images to try to identify stone walls over the entire state. I haven't had any success contacting them, but they do have this thing online, um, which allows people to go out and uh, verify that these things exist and send the information back to the state. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this project at all, but not, I think they used ArcGIS as software, but I'm, I'm really not sure. Okay, what'd you say was the title of Rumbus, New Hampshire, you said? Uh, the the state of New Hampshire was doing something, the state geological survey, something similar to that. I don't think I have the all the details on it right here, but. Uh, did, did everyone in your class look for stone walls or did other people do no, other questions? Um, everybody in the class, most of them did a, a different set of um, projects. Um, there were a couple people that did stone walls. They, they did it in different towns around the area and state though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. This is fascinating. Yeah, yeah it really is interesting. Yeah, it was it was a nice finding trying to find all of those. I I'm a, I'm a fan of the past history of of small towns and the towns of um, Massachusetts and New England. I'm from Ipswich, Mass, on North Shore of Massachusetts myself, and we have yeah. a an abundance of rock walls, um, but not many not many hills. <laughs> not a lot of slope. <laughs> no. um, I am I'm reading your text and I'm very interested in your comment about um, the use of enslaved workers because for another project, another Waitley history project, I've just been working with um, someone who has found evidence of uh, one and maybe two black slaves in Waitley. Um, wow. No one yet has found evidence of enslaved indigenous people in this town, but there is good evidence, good evidence of a bad thing in Northampton and other larger towns nearby. So I think you are right that it is unlikely that Waitley escaped this practice. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate. I always think of that topic as more of a Southern thing, but it, it's interesting to think of it as something that happened in our backyard. Um, right. But, um, right. But history stays, but times move on, which is good. Right. So um, is your poster public property? <laughs> I, I believe it. I, I think I own the rights to it. So oh, I, you I, own the rights to it. So you don't want to give us. Then you you then you may think about whether you wish to give us your poster <laughs> or access to your poster. But I think um, shall I send Zachary the dates of our next couple of meetings and so he can see when he can come back um, with access to the GIS program. If you're willing, Zachary, that would be fantastic. Yeah. We, we could also schedule a meeting around his schedule. That's true, of course. Of course we could, yes. Um, and you probably have no idea when your classes are now because everything's up in the air now for a couple of weeks. Is, is UMass delaying uh, 
Uh, they haven't given any information yet. Um, I see. <laughs> with online classes, but mm -hmm. you um, you said, I believe you said that it was usually the third month of- it, it's, our, our regular meetings are uh, the third Monday at five. But okay. um, so when you, when you, why don't you look at your class schedule and if that's hugely inconvenient, send me a couple of other sort of time blocks that are likely to be better for you. Okay. And that okay. would be great. That would be great if you'd be willing to come back. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and it sounds like Allison will let you tromp all over hundreds of acres on Mount Esther if you wish. Well, or, yeah, here. I'm, I'm gonna send him photos so he can see some of the, the rock walls that are there and, and what sort of aspect they're on. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, so, so I will give Allison your email address. Um, and um, any other, anything else anyone wants to discuss now? Just, well, thank just to thank Zachary. Yes, thank yeah, you. Thank you cool. very much. And, and, and thank you for, for um, taking the time to find us. That was, that was great. Um, yeah, no uh, uh, Alan knows, what is his name, Joe? <laughs> Joe Copera. Uh, yes, so I, I so uh, Alan, Alan deserves a little bit of the credit of bringing us together. <laughs> yes. But um, it, we're really interested, and I actually think there may be other people. In fact, I'm sure there will be other people in town who will be interested in this. But sure there are a number of people interested in LIDAR and yeah. what you can do with LIDAR. It's not just stone walls. Right. Pretty much right. anything solid is, is a good candidate for it. So, so, so why don't we let you go now and you promise you'll come back and we'll find a good time, okay? Yeah, sounds good. All right, thank, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Bye, Bye. 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 Okay. That was really interesting. It's cute. It's nice. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. I, I, I mean, I, I had no idea this program was at um, UMass, but I was with Scott Jackson right before Christmas, and he said casually that he was teaching a tree climbing course. And yeah. I thought, wow, nobody ever tried to give me credit for learning how to climb trees. Mm -hmm. And I just read, do any of you know the book Wild, uh, Wild Trees about mm -hmm. the redwoods? Oh, no, Wild Trees, no. It's very good. It is actually very interesting. Um, and about big tree climbing. So let's, um, any other discussion about that? Or shall we return to the, the flawed text on the town website? Oh, well, it all kind of comes around, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, so yes. I, I, I was saying that, that trying, trying to tackle the, the rewrite of the beginning of that four or five paragraphs made me question what the purpose is of having the text at all. Because I think if, if we are going to redo it in any way, A, we should correct any errors, but it would, it would be helpful to have a vision of why are we writing this and who are we speaking to and what's the point? Because there's all kinds of ways to do it and it could be lengthened and it certainly could be shortened. Um, so that's my question. Uh, uh, Donna suggested a very good suggestion that, that take a look at what other towns may have done in terms of a synopsis of their history. And I will do that when I get my laptop back. Um, but I'm interested in your opinions about why are we writing this and what's the point? <laughs> I can tell you that I've, I've looked at other towns on occasion just to try to get a sense of when they were founded and why. And so, well, actually more, what makes them go? What, what are their industries? Why, why were they based where they are? That kind of thing, more an economic geography point of view. But that's just the sort of thing I'm interested in, so. Right, and that's one point of view. And this speaks to that, the current text speaks to that a little bit, except it, it, it drops off at about 1900. And it's as if, you know, nothing has happened since. Um, 
So there's that's a little bit of a problem and and a dilemma. How do you write about the last century here? Uh, well, well, the last century is in the uh, Waitley Today section, which I think is oh, even, is, there a is a page called Waitley Today, which is well, that's the uh, last. That's, that's the last. The, that's the one that's actually on. full of factual errors. Okay. I mean, you know, proper but there's noun. a space between last year and a hundred years ago. Right, right. One hundred and twenty-two. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. yes. so, so it's it's perplexing to me, and and as I say, I'm not sure. It would be if whoever works on this, I think, would be helped by some kind of information about what what's the point of writing this and who Actually, is it for. You could look at it the other way around and feel quite empowered that you <laughs> will create <laughs> that. Point. We can just write our own history, and I I would I see what happens would be just as productive. I suspect yeah. there's a book to be written about it. <laughs> I, mean, you know, I, I would start from that point of view that, you know, do something that makes sense to you if you're willing to do it. I mean, it's somehow expanded from changing the first paragraph to what sounds like a big project. So maybe this still is. It could a be an project, enormous but... project. And, and I guess I don't really want an enormous project. Yeah. Or do any, and, and, and why should this be the enormous project if, if no one ever looks at it and no one cares what it says? Well, we don't know that no one ever looks at it. Well, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> um, I am. Um, uh, well, I, maybe somebody can give us a count of the, the frequency with which somebody looks at it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, 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 there's all kinds of, it's just fraught with problems. The whole trying to explain how the town got its name is problematic to me because it was named for a guy that uh, I'm not sure. I, I think we should have a new name for this town, frankly, because I'm not sure he was worth having the town named for him anymore. So they named a hotel for him in, in uh, England. Um, so. well, yeah. <laughs> you know, he was a loyalist British yeah. citizen who <laughs> liked theater and Ooh. gardening and never married, you know. And so, what kind of story can we write about that? Well, so if we're not, it was a nice if political not. patronage move. Yes, it was. It was. If we're not, if yes, we're not waiting, so, then it's been obsolete for two hundred years. Probably made um, a lot of money. But you'll disappoint all the people in town who roll their eyes and refer to our place of residence as I Wendy. Know. I know. Which know. it is, of course. I'm just saying. <laughs> but we're the one and only. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're, the, we're the one and only. Yeah, exactly. Um, Allison, I think you should take one more pass and if you can't stand it, back off. <laughs> um, okay, all right. But I, we should, I mean, there really are some just plain out factual errors and um, particularly in the part the today. And I think when and if we send some uh, suggested replacement text to Brian, I think we should send it once. I don't think we should be, you know, <laughs> it should be once <laughs> and there's no rush at all. So, I am quite sure that we can replace that text and no one will notice that the text right. it's just, it's just that we won't be able to do it. Someone else will have to, unless right. Judy, you could do it. Can you right. can you change anything about the town website or just the historical no, I can, page? I can only, I only have access to certain pages. So that's what I thought. Yeah, we'll have to ask someone to do it. So um, uh, you can decide, Allison, whether you want to talk about this the next time we meet or, you know, okay. in June. <laughs> All right, I'm going, to, okay. I'm going to take a look at some other examples and see if yeah. that helps me focus better. Yeah. Um, uh, the Hidden History Project is on here because you asked um, Susan yeah, for some more I discussion. I asked on there because once we start promoting what is going on for the 250th, I wanted a sound bite of how to describe it. And I'm wondering if you've already given that to me in... You're in the interview. Well, I probably we probably gave you something in my email requesting our massive nine hundred dollar budget. But, oh, I um, wanted to talk about that too. But um, uh, we have uh, provisionally written the um, two or three sentences that are will appear on the landing page, and I can certainly send you that. Yeah, yeah I, I it's, it's just a little intro. 
a short bit, and I'm looking at the annual report and the description of a digital map of lesser known aspects of town history, complete with links to relevant photographs, text. That may be what I, you know, all that I need, or at least that's getting close. It's just people okay. ask, are going to ask, what is this? And I need that. I need well, that. and on that front, today I had an inquiry from the press. Oh, <laughs> a, a reporter from the reminder. The reminder is that thing that gets put in all our mailboxes for free. Yeah. The and they have fun readers. Has <laughs> real <laughs> articles. Exactly. I mean, I uh -huh. took one of a member of our select board, not Mr. Barron, to task for something that he was the that the other select board member was quoted as saying. And I think that person must have said that because I did not receive a response. <laughs> so they have, although that person never responds to anything. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, they do have some real reporting. Um, so I had a nice exchange with Mr. I've forgotten his name and said, we're at the conceptual stage. Mm -hmm. We're a little bit farther than the conceptual stage now, but we're at the implementation stage. Uh, but that it would certainly be, I told him a little bit about it and said it would absolutely be up and running by June um, in connection with the rest of the town's 250th celebration and that I would get in touch with him then. And he wrote back, thank you. I would really be interested. <laughs> so that was nice. That was nice. The other thing that I wanted to say about this project is for, fund for fundraising for the 250th, we are asking businesses if they want to sponsor one of the items on the docket for the celebration. And as of now, the Hip History is the only event that is sponsored. And, 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 and I thanked Fred and wrote to Allison and Alan to tell him. <laughs> Because Fred told me that he had sponsored us. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Fred is, Fred okay. Is, That's, it was very nice. Very nice. <laughs> uh, so you know, we we have we have now have a thousand dollars because that will repay the original nine hundred that went out with a hundred to spare. One thing I was thinking we may want to do, and I don't know if you've included this in your thinking, is how to get the word out to people about this. And while we can do it digitally, putting it on the website and all of that, I don't know if we want to consider producing, I'm going to say a bookmark, don't take me literally, some physical piece that has the link on it or the, you know, the how to get to it on it that we give out at events that people can find it. Well, mm -hmm. we'll advertise it in the scoop for one thing. We mm -hmm. we have discussed creating some kind of contest related to it that might grab some attention, mostly because I want to unload this gift certificate to the Waitley Inn that I have sitting here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> someone will want it. Um, and, and we did uh, circle briefly around the idea of whether we should have a launch um, you know, and actually project it and show how to use the page. But I, I um, myself, I'm not, I still think that might be a good idea, but we are not, we're not at the point where I could even imagine doing that because we're still figuring out how the thing is going to work. Yeah, and we, we have time. I just wanted to put out there that mm -hmm. um, A, we now have funding and B, to think about uh, how do we let people know about this? Well, we've got no, that's about nice. That. I think that I think that's a that's a good thing to think about. Okay, that was it. Yeah. Um, okay, it is ten of six. I sent other business. I sent out, I believe, the material about. Um, the green jeans application, the marijuana cultivation project on uh, Christian Lane um, on Wayne Hutkowski's property. Did anybody have enough people looked at that that we can talk about it or should we wait till our February meeting? 
have not looked at it yet. Nor have I, I'm afraid. Okay. Okay. And Judy, you think we're fine looking at it in oh, front yeah. of it? Yeah. I, I also think this is the same property as the urban grown one that was the first project that anybody approved. And um, they're putting up a couple barns, but most of it is hoop houses. And I, I would be surprised if there are any issues, but certainly February is fine. So does this mean that urban ground pulled out and now green jeans is in? Or there urban, the, the relationship between the Hutkoskis and urban grown fell apart two years ago. Mm -hmm. okay. and nobody's quite sure what happened, but I think they each, my guess is they each discovered that the other one didn't have any money. <laughs> I see. Yep. Okay. But this one, this one has been approved by the CBA? Yes. How are the neighbors? Do you know? Not especially happy. Yeah. Um, it's too bad they've had more than their share on the, that end of Christian Lane. Um, any other, other business? Okay, so then where's my iPad? Just looking for the date of the next meeting, um, which is uh, February twenty February twenty first at five p.m. Also a federal holiday, President's Day. Um, you know how to pick them. Which is not an issue for anyone in particular, is it? No. Okay. And I will communicate with Zachary and let you know <laughs> what, we're, what we're up to. Because um, I think we should grab up a little more of his time before he graduates and moves to Montana or something. <laughs> okay. Is there any, that's the while I think of it, is there any um, overlap with Calus map? Well, I wondered about that because he didn't seem to know about Kala's map and she certainly found a lot of stone walls because now I and everybody else who walks through Waitley Center Woods climbs over those walls. Um, I, Allison, what do you think? You about Kala's map or about how many walls you found? No, about about Judy's question about overlap with what Kala Jones just I, I guess so what I meant was would he have any interest in looking at Kala's map or would there be um, any benefit I, to him? I actually had scribbled down while we were meeting that I would send him that. Um, and I would yeah. that yeah. might be interesting. Yeah. You yeah. know, I would say that the, his yellow lines on his map or a small percentage of the stone walls that exist in this in this town. And but it, 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 that's it, in part like, because is that's how many walls he can be found, you know, by remote survey techniques that he's using. But, but but he also he also narrowed the lens by limiting the slope to fifteen degrees. Right, but right so, out my backyard. So is a so, flat, so and there right. are stone walls that he does not have on his map. Alan's house probably too. You know, and I don't know about Judy. You know, you get lower down, there are fewer rocks, so there are fewer walls. You get in the floodplain, there are no rocks at all. But yeah, he, he's, he's got some walls, but he has not got very many walls. You know, the whole yep. town, if you found them all and put them with yellow lines on the map, the place would look like it was covered with a fishnet stocking. Um, well, not East Waitley. No. No, up, up on this side. Town center and west. And, and yeah. he had labeled his project North, West Waitley. West of Chestnut Plain Road, mostly. Right, right. I, I'll, right. If you're interested, I will send you guys photos, you know, of others, you know, if you want to see some of the other, the, the sheep, the sheep built stone walls on Mount Esther are pretty interesting. And, and I laughed when Judy sent that because if you've been to Scotland, <laughs> Or oh, yeah. You certainly know that those sheep are on 60 degree inclines. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they are, they are, you know, they're 
right legs are shorter than their left legs. I, I saw <laughs> a drawing of Mount Monadnock once and it was, you know, yeah. fascinating. Well, Mount Greylock, Mount Greylock too was, was virtually cleared yeah. and there are stone walls on Mount Greylock that are there. Right, and that's, that is very steep. So, um, so, uh, so, uh, but I think his project can be interesting and useful to us, even though we know that it oh, has totally. limitations. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay, well, thank you all then. Good night. Okay. Good night. All right, thanks. See you. Good night. See you. Stay safe, everybody. Right. Yes.